to another episode of From the Shadows. And as always, if you are enjoying the series, please do drop a like on the video now. In our last episode, we got a one-all draw uh, with Red Star away from home, and I felt like it was actually a pretty decent result for us just because they are one of the favourites to go up along with us, and, you know, it's an away game against one of our main rivals. So I felt that it was a good a good point to get, considering how we started off well, but the game sort of faded towards them. Uh, but that being said, I still feel that, you know, there was still a chance for us to potentially win that game. It was only the penalty that got them back in it. Uh, now, we've had an interesting month. It's Obviously, we've started the Cup games, which have been... Interesting, I guess, is the best way to look at it. Um, also, I had a weird situation. And you know, obviously, that I rant a lot about player interactions. So this isn't going to be a rant or anything like that. It's just that um, something else that's new is a player. I can't remember who it was, but I'm pretty certain that he'd started seven of the eight games that we'd played and played the full 90 in all of them. Came to me and asked him, asked me why he wasn't getting enough first team football. And I'm just, I don't know what to say anymore. Like, this game is so broken with those fucking player interactions. It's, it's, it's reached a point now where it's totally illogical where you've got a player that's played seven of the last eight matches and he's claiming that he's not getting enough first team football and these weren't substitute appearances either these were first team games and it's just so pointless i mean fix it jesus it's so it wouldn't even take that much to fix it just have a bit more common sense in the system you're using for the player interactions it is my the biggest bugbear i have with fm is the player interaction system everything else like rebounds and shit i can kind of deal with but that is the one thing that kind of just really that's what really grinds my gears anyway so let's get into what's happened this month um first up we started away uh, not away at home against a relatively poor team and we had a bit of a strange game and maybe we we're a little bit lucky in this one Still dominated most of the game, but it, it was strange in the sense that Fabian Radas actually put them in front on 15 minutes, and we'd been fantastic up to that point. I think it might have even been their first shot. And they obviously, you know, then got an injury, and there was a serious one as well. There was a lot of bookings in a quick spell, so the game took a long time to process. Then, just before halftime, Loic Puyo was sent off for a second yellow card, and I was worried, because we're a goal down at home to a poor team, and now down to 10 men, and things were not looking good for us at all in this one they really were but then thankfully just after half time um Poplard was also sent off equaling things up a little bit and it enabled us to get ourselves back on the front foot at that point now I made a substitution um to well I made the choice to bring off Traore and bring in Johan and Villa and oh my god what a decision two goals in four minutes for him flipped the game on its head and we were able to run away 2-1 winners although I would have liked to seen a, a slightly better like with those sort of stats i would have expected four or five goals maybe but you know we're getting there i feel like we're getting there and it's certainly looking promising on this side that that is for one thing that's for sure we commit a lot of fouls in this game which is more than usual i mean 10 is still not that many but you know what i mean in our next match we had colmar um colmar at home again two home games in a row and we needed to try and win both and this one was oh my god we were very lucky um is the best way to look at this basically Sokriere, I brought him off in the end because he just wasn't really doing a great deal in this one. And Hakim Jabali in the 91st minute, there was four minutes of stoppage time to be fair, but even so, came in and scored the winner for us. And it's those types of results that could be the difference between us going up and staying in this division, basically. And again, we went back to our usual, just the two fouls committed in this one. We got the discipline back. And yeah, I was thoroughly happy with this one. And by, um, Traore was actually man of the match for this one. We're sort of rotating. Also, um, <laughs> I made sure because my assistant seems to refuse to put anyone useful on the bench. So I'm checking the benches myself before I quick pick games because he seems to put two attacking midfielders who are right and left sided and two left backs on the bench every single time when that's pointless. So I have to keep redoing that and putting lots of centre mids. But now I feel that it's given us more options. So in the, the latter stages of the games, we're not left putting players on our position. So that's an important thing I've changed. And I think it's come up good for us. Now, in our next match, this was a strange one. Uh, I think what happened here was, as you can see, we had a lot of shots, but most of them were off target. Um, Boasaha uh, put them in front on 10 minutes, and I thought, okay, we, we can come back into this. And I actually ended up making a triple substitution because it just wasn't working. And I think what happened is the system they were playing seemed to be encouraging us to shoot from range too much. And I don't know what it was. I think we had 12 long... Yeah, 12. And we didn't deserve to win this game, but it was just a weird... I don't know, it just must have been the way their system set up. We just weren't able to get into our usual positions. And it they, they managed to, you know, foil us and well done to them for that, which kind of just knocked us off our perch a little bit. But thankfully, we had a chance to rejuvenate ourselves in the cup against the lower division team, uh, Corbeil. And I think we should have had more goals, if I'm honest. Gamia and Odrum Bailly. Gamia's strike was a qual... I'm going to have to show you this, just because I want to show you how hard he hit the ball. Um, it was crazy. But in this game, as you can see, we had nearly 70% possession at one point. Uh, yeah, 90%... Pa at one point... At half time, we had 96% pass completion. Look at the strike from Gamiette. Um, 
I would have liked to have seen a couple more goals. We had 22 shots by half time, and I think we just kind of gave up a little bit in the second half. And as you can see, again, I made a triple sub uh, because Socrea got injured, and I thought, let's probably just get some players off. So we're through to the next round of the cup. Uh, in fact, as you can see, we're actually through another round. Um, next up, we had Istra at home. Again, we had a few home games. Though. In fact, we had three in a row in the league, which was beautiful for us because it gave us a chance to get straight back on the horse. And that's exactly what we did against Istra. Um, Johan Mvia, who's proven to be a fantastic signing, I have to say. Now, the problem is Sokria's injury has... He's got a broken jaw. Um, so he's going to be out for three to four weeks, which means it is going to be a case of Hakim Jabali leading the line for us today as well. But uh, we've got Landry Zahui Ikpu, um, Ikpo rather, on the bench. Um, but a 2 0 win over Istra again, and keeping a clean sheet because we've struggled a little bit with that lately, so that was important. Um, in this one, we had more shots, but I don't know, I, we just didn't seem to be quite as. It wasn't so many long shots, and there was a lot of good opportunities for us in this game, and that's what made me happy. We were definitely, I mean, massively deserved to win this one. We were good in the air in this one as well, I found, which was nice to see. It does vary whether we're actually competitive in the air or not. Next up, we had, well, quite a surprising result, actually. They were only eighth in the league, and. Now, the one thing I would say about this game is that the two injuries to Jabali and Boalion uh, did not help us out one bit. And they were both first half injuries too, which did not help at all. Um, we really did. And obviously K Kante actually got injured late on in the game as well, but I couldn't bring him off. I think I did actually end up bringing him off in just taking him off and playing with 10 men. But thankfully by that point, we were already out of the way as Boalion had given us the lead. Kante had made it too. And then Luther making it 3-0 away from home. That's probably one of our best results actually. You know, they were sort of mid table, but to win 3-0 away from home, was actually fairly impressive they didn't really turn up and we kind of you know four straight wins in the league was something else uh or was it four straight wins no of course not because we lost that game in between didn't we and also it wasn't three home games in a row because we lost that away game uh, away home away from home our form does need to step it up a little bit like a way draw a way draw a way draw a way loss um that we did win that one though so away from home our form does need to really kick it up a notch i feel but thankfully that win does give me a bit more confidence Finally, this month, we had a cup game against Le Touquet. And, I mean, look at this. It, the thing is, though, this game terrified me because we went in front through Koulibaly on eight minutes and all was well. All was just sound. Fine and dandy. Then, Barnetcha got in at the far post and scored, made it 1-all. I was a little bit worried because that was their first shot of the game. And then they got a free kick and Ducatel scored. We were 2-1 down after two shots and I was gutted. And we spent the rest of the game absolutely battering them and thank god that frederic marquez equalized for us with eight minutes to go i mean it was an absolute backs against the wall job and it was a stripy jumper job is what it was gonna be and we actually ended up having to go to extra time against this lot thankfully I mean, we did play a weakened team as you can tell marquez got one and then stefan jolly managed to make it 4-2 to us in the end but bear in mind these guys are like a I don't even know what league they're in. Um, I tried to find out, but the league's name in the game is not the real league in real life. So if you do know what league that Latuke are in, I don't think it's the fourth or fifth. I think it might be sixth or seventh tier we're talking here. I'm not entirely sure. Um, and we've been drawn in the next round against a team from the league below us uh, with Bourges. Bourges 18, or Bourges. Uh, I think it's Bourges um, 18. So there you go. Uh, they're semi-professional, this lot. So there could be a little bit more of a challenge. I think we're at home, though. No, we're away, so that could be interesting. But that brings us to today, and this is how the league is looking. It's still very tight. Now, we've won a lot of games this month still, but we're actually are still a point off the, two points off the top because Amiens are absolutely flying. Um, 29 points on the board already. They've just been phenomenal. They've been genuinely fantastic, and I think they're going to be the main rivals here. But Freus are still right in behind there, and obviously there's uh, USBCO. Uh, Red Star have slipped off the pace a little bit. They've had a few poor results, um, so there is that. So... All in all, we're still up there. We're four points clear of dropping out of the promotion spots, which is vital for us. You know, it's a 34-game season, so we're, like, just over a third of the way through it. And doing a solid job so far. We've got a decent amount of attacking. We've got the best defence in the league, which is crucial. So I I'm, all in all, very happy. Let's just quickly show you the squad. Top goal scorer is Sokria, still with five. So, again, the goals have kind of had to come from elsewhere this month, just because of Sokria's injuries. Uh, Assist-wise, Luther with five now, Boalion with four, and Ojan Bailly with three. He's also received an international call-up, so naturally I uh, got in shit because I tried to talk to him about the international call-up. I, I don't know what's changed. I've not done a save where I've had good stats, managerial stats, for a little while, and I think whatever's happened since that new patch just seems to fuck player interaction even more, because now, even though I've got fantastic managerial stats, I still haven't got into a single discussion with a player that hasn't ended up with them wanting to leave again. It just seems the whole thing is broken now. You just... Ah! Uh, it's, it's crazy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I tried to congratulate him on that. And, oh, no, patronised. Um, player of the match, Ozenbay has three. Average rating overall, Marquez had one fantastic substitute appearance, to be fair, and two goals 
but that doesn't really uh, yeah, fill in with that. Ojin Bai is sort of the most consistent one there. Key aerial challenges is actually Lebohi uh, with 31. Key passes is uh, Luther with 47. And Ojin Bai is in there too, which is nice to see. Key tackles, of course, is Lebohi as well. And interceptions is, once again, Lebohi. As a value, Troy, I kind of want to get rid of Kanate just because he's not going to play for us that much at the moment. And I really want to try and cash in on his value. And we need to get some money because at the moment, the club is hemorrhaging money despite the fact that all the players I've signed are on free tra are on non-contract basically um so that is a difficult issue because yeah we've just got to get rid of some of this money uh, like i don't know how much the debt we're in at the moment if you look that already we've played literally 12 games and that's already the debt situation we were in the white like in the in the black when we started this and uh, that's an issue for me because i don't know how we're supposed to get money uh if we're he how are we hemorrhaging like how were they in the white before that is what i want to know um because I don't know. It, it's a difficult one for me. Really, it really is. I'm really hoping that we can get up and that will hopefully change a few things because it's going to have to, really. It's going to cause some problems otherwise. We're going to need to go on a hell of a cup run because at the moment we're getting like £2,000 for winning the games. So I hope that that prize money goes up massively. And <laughs> That's all I can say. So let's jump straight in. What kind of system are they playing? Ooh, okay. I think we've done relatively well. I think actually that um, uh, Group Sportif Consulat actually played a system like that when we played them. So... This could be a tough... Well, actually, we're at home as well, which gives us a glorious chance for me. It really does. Let's do a quick pick here. Um, move some stuff around. Now, as you can see, the bench. Look, left back, right side of midfielder, right side of midfielder, left back. Why is he not picking... Pl like, I understand that they're probably the best players, but they're not even... That's not even true. So I don't get why my assistant will constantly try to put these players on the bench when we don't even have... Right... In the team. It's a little bit... I don't know. That doesn't seem to work. I know... I mean, I can just, I, I just before every game, I just do it myself, but it's a little bit pointless that he doesn't do that. Um, I usually put a striker on the bench because, again, we're, we're lacking a little bit. Jabali is back today, which is good. Um, yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, Halloween, Kulabali, Gamiet, and Via. Yeah, okay. Thankfully, we've got a lot of players. I, I've moved some of the uh, better signings into our sort of first team squad now which is why you can see them here um just so i could get easier access to them at the start of games like this so we're going to go with jabali luther ojambay gamiet via treore wayon puyo uh who's actually slip, slip slightly further back i think it's because we've got defensive issues at the moment uh billy jean cantini and of course de marcone in gold this should be and the tactic is now fluid there's still a few things that aren't perfect i think but we're nearly there now which is glorious to see uh don't know who he is lovely old job right we're at home. I'd like to think that we can win this one. I would be pretty disappointed if we didn't in a way, but then they are a really tough side. Um, the draw away at Red Star Paris was a decent result for me, but this is one of those ones that I think if we're going to win this league or get promoted, we're going to have to win games like this um, at home against the teams around us. That game against Amiens, whenever it comes along, is going to be an absolute humdinger, and I will try to make sure we live comment depending on when it falls. Hopefully it's not too far. It's going to be coming up soon, I'd have thought, so that might well be our next live comment, depending on how close it actually is. Uh, cleared into space, and it should just be wrapped up by Puyo, who's slipping a bit deeper, but he's almost playing like the defensive midfielder, just slightly slightly deeper, essentially. And Via Cantini, possession-wise and stats-wise, it's looking positive for us so far, which is what I like to see. Lots of space out wide for Cantini. Just whip one in. Go on. Oh, no. Keeping the possession. And Audrey Bayer does so well there. That's the sort of aggression we need. Out wide to Bualion. He's so useful outside here. Gamiet, go on, long ranger. And Via, long ranger. Jabali through, and that's offside, surely. No, wait, no. 1 0 to F. Oh, yes. 1 0 to Paris FC, and that sends us back to the top of the league. And looking at the stats from the start of this game, you can't fault us for that. We seem to have really controlled the opening 10 minutes, and we've got the reward that we so crave, and I'm happy with. And that would push us six points above this lot, and that's kind of where we need to do. Just keep extending that lead. And Via with the unselfish pull through, and Jabali finishing that off and that's great because you know with soccer out for a few weeks jabali is going to be absolutely vital to our sort of playoff well not playoff push our promotion push basically because i really do want to see if we can get it in the first season because i don't know how we do with the debt otherwise i think we've taken a little bit of a, well we haven't taken a bit of a, i haven't taken a risk but the club are um in the sense that if we don't go out we could be in serious trouble so we've got to make sure that we get a good result this is an ocean by oh what a finish it's two nil to paris fc and ocean by Oh, off the bar. Third goal of the season for him. Look at those stats, though. This game is is ours at the moment. They have got nowhere near us, and that's impressive um, from us because these guys have been hot on our tail since the very last episode. Everything we've done, they've done as well. But what about this from Ojan Bailly? Bang! In off the crossbar. 2-0 to Paris FC. That's more like it, lads. I'm, we're starting to get a bit more of a team effort, and everything's looking really good now. And he's got a man outside. It's Bualion. Can he pick a pass? 
Drops it across. ex Oh, it's 3-0, and Luther's got the goal. And this is just turning into a lovely old time. Ooh, celebrate good times, come on. You know, it's useful that we can actually play it out wide if we need to. We've got that option in our game as well. We can dominate the centre, but every now and then, just when they think that they've got us covered in the centre, one of our fullbacks will overlap and take them out of the game, like that. Um, it's it's a weird system. I don't know how it works, but it does. I've, I've genuinely, if someone showed me that the, the actual shape of our system and said that's going to work, I would be very, very sceptical about it, but I cannot fault it you know i cannot say that it hasn't worked because it has um we're three and a half at half time here playing fantastically well potential for even more goals in the second half maybe get our goal difference up a little bit because that could come down to that i don't know if this i think this league is done on goal difference so it's important that we get ours up oh and via's in just injured that's not good go on uh what are you doing go on go to the ball force him out wide that's it right um we're gonna have to do a a thing in a minute i assume um because it looked like he's injured seriously right that's great um, doesn't matter though, this is the great thing. We can actually bring someone on to replace him. Koulibaly, he's not exactly as good as Mvia, and Mvia's been superb this month, he really has. So that's a little bit of a shame, but... We're 3-0 up, we're in a good position in this game, we're looking very, very solid. Demar Kone, notice how he's distributing it to Traore now, instead of the fullbacks. Admittedly, it went out to the fullback this time anyway, but I find that that was a simple change that made a hell of a difference to us. I don't quite know why, but it just enabled us to keep the ball a bit more. Sh Luther all the way through, and it's a penalty now! Uh, I guess. Uh, actually, I said it probably was. Um, so a chance now for Luther to get... I don't know, is that his hat-trick? No, it's not, is it? He's, I think he's just our penalty taker, actually. So a chance for us to go four goals to the good here against one of our best... One of the best teams in this league, one of our nearest rivals. That would be quite an achievement to go 4-0 up at home against them. That's the kind of performance we need to see more of. You know, we showed it against... Um, oh, God, who was it? Sportive Consulat away from home. But now this is the sort of first time we've really shown this at home since that game earlier in the season that we won 4-0 with the old style of tactic and that's better i think the fluidity is now really starting to reach its sort of uh critical mass oh what a well actually i'll tell you i will say what i say but i think they hit the post actually um from umbone hmm shy accuracy has been fantastic as well today which is a delight uh probably make the next substitution around about now um Jabali's been good, but he's not looking brilliant in terms of fitness. So I'm going to bring on Ikpu, because, uh, Ikpo, I've got to stop calling him Ikpu. Ikpo for a little while, and I'm going to also get off, uh, I'm going to get off Traore and give um, Heluin a chance to have a run out, because he's a decent player, and I want to get him involved a bit more, um, because we are going to need backups in those positions. Hopefully we can keep the clean sheet, though. That's kind of quite important for me. I want to try and keep as many clean sheets as possible this season, and try to really play on that defensive record, because it's going to allow us to have an amazing goal difference, even if we don't score that many. Um, they've, yeah, and that's kind of important for me as well. I'd take a 4-0. Um, it's the second 4-0 of the season as well. We've sort of chilled off a little bit in the second half. Oh, hello. Wallion. Ball in. Luther on the edge. Can he get a hat-trick? Oh, he's going to lose it here, right? You better... Right, this is about how well we can defend here. Look at the amount of players they've got surging forward. Um, they've actually got a good opportunity to grab a goal back here. How well do we do defensively? Oh, well done, Ojan Bailly. Oh, great play. That is some brilliant defending. We actually got caught on the counter there, which is a surprise. It doesn't happen very often, but well done, guys. You defended that well. But I don't think we're out of the danger zone just yet. I think there might be more to come here. It's Gendry. Um... Ball and well done. That's better. Nicely, nicely done. Or are we going to get a counter attack on them now? Oh, it's going to be a yellow card, and it's going to be a sending off, and that means that this game is going to finish with them with ten men, us with a four goal lead, and that should, in theory, do the trick. Oh, hello. Maybe a fifth. Ojumbai whips it in. Ikpa. Ah, oh, Balion. It's the player there. Ojumbai. Can he pick a pass out? Halloween. Kulibali. It's not hit the oh what a chance that was that should have been five it was a good hit unfortunate really that it actually hit the crossbar this time and didn't go in gamiette he's got a good strike on him drops inside for luther what a finish that is from luther it's five nil and he's got a hat trick idris x Shergui, what a performance that is from him five nil to paris fc and i'm absolutely ecstatic this is fantastic as well from gamiette really unselfish and Incredible composure there to complete his hat-trick. 5 nothing Paris FC, and what a performance this is. Definitely the best performance of the season, uh, albeit with a little bit of luck with the red card there. Oh, brilliant. The perfect end to the game. Another injury. Uh, I don't even know what to do anymore. We just cannot stay away from getting players injured. We get two or three players injured every single game, and it just seems completely unavoidable anymore. But another clean sheet, another win... A massive win as well against the main rival. That sort of says to me we're going to be going up this year. Or not so much that it says we will. It says that we're certainly setting our stall out to say, yes, this is where we're going to be. You know, if you can beat us, then fine. But we've only lost one game this season. Uh, no, we haven't. 
Oh, we have, yeah. It was that one match we've lost once. Three goals and an assist for Idris X Shogui. What about, what about that? Just glorious stuff. Still, oh no, we are top of the league now because Amiens, did they lose or did they draw? Or have they not played? Oh, they drew with Dunkirk. That's a poor one. Away at Dunkirk is not a place they should be drawing. Um, so that's given us a chance to fly back into top spot. Best defence, best attack, best goal difference. Lovely stuff. That is about as good as I could possibly have hoped for in one game. I have to say, I'm phenomenally happy with that. Right, let's see what's up next. Um, I'm tempted to do the Amiens game um, as our next live comp because it is the top of the table clash. I know that there's only a few games in between, but I feel like it's worth it. I really do. Um because it's going to be, you know, we're only going to have a couple of top of the table clashes against them because it does look as though it's between us and them for the top spot at the moment. And I feel like we want to really live con those games. So that's what we're going to do. In the next episode, we will do the Amiens game away from home, which is going to be a toughie. So if we can get a draw there, I'd be pretty damn happy. Oh, Torm Hamstring. Shit. Sorry, I just saw that. Fuck. Anyway, if you guys like what you've seen, please do drop a like on the video. And if you've liked it even more than that and you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel for more Outcast icons and, of course, from the shadows in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for what is going to be an absolutely crucial game now. Aware Amiens, top of the table clash. This is, this is the big leagues, people. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.